Good morning, everybody. Morning. Just give me one horn. Thank you. <laughs> Don't take much to entertain me. Okay? Appreciate that. We need to wake some folks up anyway. It is good to see you here this morning. Uh, we've seen about four different weather patterns move through this morning. Got so foggy at one point, I couldn't see out my back door. I said, they can come listen to him preach, but they won't be able to see him preach. And 30 minutes later, I had nice clear skies, and now it's clouded back up again. And Anyway, weather, temperature's going up and down, but it's great to be here this morning. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer, and then we'll uh, do our birthdays and get started. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together today. Thank you, Lord, for uh, Shady Grove Church family. And thank you for what we do for each other and how we do it in your name and uh, for your glory, not for ours. Pray that you would be with Pastor Stevens today as he brings us the message, that you would lift him up, be with our musicians and, and so forth as we leave. Just bless us now as we worship you in Christ's name. Amen. A few announcements before we get to the birthdays. Please, 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 uh, uh, we need to know uh, if you've still got donations for the barbecue, whether it's drinks or money or whatever it was you signed up for, we need those ASAP so we can get a, uh, 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 an inventory, make sure we got everything we need. We need... Do what? Cakes here Yeah, have your cakes here no later than 11 o'clock on Saturday. Cakes no later than 11 because we got to cut them and get them into the, the boxes. And uh, again, we ask that those would be found cakes. Uh, we're trying to work out something different. That's between y'all and your money donations if you get that to us. Uh, we have sign up sheets inside. Now, I know you're not here to go inside, but if you will please let me know before you leave today that if you could be here to help us Friday during the day, especially Friday afternoon, two, two very uh, urgent areas of need will be chopping the barbecue and helping over here packaging the barbecue. So please let me know today if you've not signed up, either text me, call me, or uh, let the preacher know or Mike know when they go by, maybe they can tell me too so we can uh, get a head count on that because that's always a tough thing to do there too. Um, just pray for us this week. I pray that we'll have good weather. God is year after year after year after year blessed us on that day uh seldom if ever have we had any rain maybe one time we've had rain in all the years we've done it that i can remember that was uh something to worry about and uh he just keeps blessing us and we keep giving him the honor and glory don't forget baptist uh children's home food roundup um uh, rhonda was that today the last day on that uh toilet paper is today toilet paper is today okay message went out there in dire need of toilet paper if you want to donate toilet paper or a uh grocery store card where they can go get some uh subject did come up that one ply you can read your newspaper through it it's not what you would use at home please don't send that to somebody else but anyway uh prison ministry don't forget the roll up or solid deodorants that uh county's doing there and uh what you can do with your operation christmas child child shoe box uh where you can pack them yourself or go online and pay and tell them what you want to put in your box and they'll do that for you Keep that in mind. Did I miss anything? Okay. Uh, birthdays today. On the 30th, Miss Claire Burgess. 30, on the 1st, Corbett Lackey. On the 2nd, Jeffrey Burgess. And on the 2nd, Mr. Jimmy Cadness. And I know of at least two are here this morning. So, Miss Rhonda, would you come sing to them, please? Did you need to stay with you? No, I did not. How about you doing that? Okay. Well, we sing happy birthday. Also, remember, um, our state missions offering today is the last day. Uh, last count, we were $75 short of our $400 goal. So if you have not had a chance to give and would like to do that, there's um, special envelopes in the uh, basket as Mike comes around this morning. So we would appreciate your help with that. All right, let's sing happy birthday to those who have birthdays this week. And join with me, if you will, while you're in your cars. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God loves you. Happy birthday to you. All right, so let's sing a song. We're going to sing a favorite hymn or an old hymn. It's called The Solid Rock. And if you're in your car and you'd like to sing with us, please do so. Uh, we're going to sing the first and last verses. <laughs>
speakers, at least here on the radio. Uh, so we're going to be finishing up today in the book of Philippians. And so I ask if you can, you will, you're able to uh, turn over there and uh, ask that you uh, keep us in prayer today as we uh, uh, try to preach God's word and uh, do it in a, a way that is honoring and glorifying unto the unto God. And so if you have your Bibles and you uh, can open up to Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, and we will start in verse 15, Philippians 4 and verse 15. He says, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving, receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, very pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for this day. I thank you for just loving us and being with us today. Lord, we come today uh, with so, so many different things. God, we have folks who have lost loved ones. We have folks who are, who are, have folks in the hospital that aren't doing well. But God, we pray that you comfort us during this time, Lord, whether, whether someone has lost someone or whether someone's in the hospital or, or whether maybe they have some financial issues or any, any problems that may be on our mind, Lord. I pray that we lay them down at your feet today, God, that we just give it all to you and know that when we give it all to you, that you will respond to our actions. And Father, help me to preach this message today that you've laid upon my heart, God, and I pray that you help us to know that we serve a real God. We don't serve a, a, a statue. We don't serve a mute God. We serve a living God that hears our prayers. And Father, I thank you so much, Lord, and I ask you all these things in your precious name. Amen. Our series in Philippians has uncovered a great many different truths and a great many different characteristics that he, he exhorts us to show, uh, like graciousness, love, courage, unity, commitment, boldness, unselfishness, uh, even humility and being steadfast. Uh, we've seen that joy, moderation, and being free from joy, uh, charity, contentment, and being confident in Christ are all characteristics that he seeks for us to have. We need to have these worked or working out in our lives. And these things, of course, are achieved by prayer, godly thinking, godly behavior, and being in God's word. And so I have a nice little quote from uh, Martin Luther, the reformer. He says, a religion that gives nothing, costs nothing, and suffers nothing is worth nothing. Think about that. It costs God, his son. Why? Because you were worth it. <laughs> I'll let you think about that for a minute. When we're faithful to obey and giving and serving and doing our part, 
God is faithful in doing his part. He is faithful in, in returning our investment per se. And so let's start in verse 15. He says, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Paul is out doing his business. He's out being a missionary. He's planting churches. And this church and this church alone was the only one that said, Hey, we ought to help him. We ought to support him. We ought to help him out. And so even in, he was talking about even when he was in uh, Thessalonica, you sent aid once again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but the fruit that abounds. Uh, the church that was given increased their fruit on, a, on their account before God. Listen, when we give and we give our talents and we give our time and we give our tithes and we do all these things, God adds these things to our account. Listen, you cannot outgive God. Uh, God will supply all your needs. God will be faithful. God will do what he says he's got to do and says what he's going to do. So when Paul, Paul first preached the gospel in Philippi, the surrounding area, the only church that helped him materially was that church. So he's exhorting them and saying, hey, thank you for that. Thank you for your uh, giving. But he's also saying, listen, you're going to have fruit from your investment. You're going to have fruit from pouring into the ministry. You're going to have some profit, per se, that comes back to you. Listen, I'm not talking about prosperity. I'm talking about we profit through people reached and lives changed. And, and that, that, these are the ways that we render our profit in a Christian life. Um, he's talking about we can't wait for others to give. The church was the first to give. They, they gave without being uh, prodded or told or talked to. But when we invest in God's work, we always have a profit. Let me share a little story with you. I was uh, I was privy to talk to this man. He was uh, he was homeless, and uh, he was he was working at the same place I was working, and we were talking. And I found out that he was living in his car. And I said, "Man, I said, listen, I said, let me talk to you for just a minute." And I talked to him about the Lord, and I told him who he was, and. And man, I work, Mike, I work so hard, man. I'm telling you what, I thought for sure I was going to get him in and baptize him in the back of the store. But he just didn't come to Christ while I was trying. But what happened is I planted a seed. I planted a seed and, and, and maybe even forced some fertilizer on him. Because <laughs> I really wanted this guy to come to Christ. Because he was one of them you'd get all the way up to tearing up. And then he'd start thinking about all the worries in the world that he had. And I always thought, man, just, just surrender. Just surrender. And you know, many folks in church are in that same boat, Mike. I see them, and they're so close to giving it all over to him. They're so close to saying, I surrender all. And then they walk out the doors. Or they drive out of the parking lot. I guess we got a new term now. But I had a call a year, I, I hadn't talked to this man in probably a little over a year, and I had a call from a pastor, and he was talking about a few things here and there, and he said, hey, I just wanted you to know that this fella, I've been keeping up with him, and I wanted you to know that I baptized this man a couple of Sundays ago, and I thought you might want to know. I said, praise be to God. Hey, it might not be by me. It might not be by my doing, but when God has his hand in it, Man, souls are saved and lives are changed. So I was, I was pumped up to find out that they, it wasn't me, but I was able to be a part of it. And God returned on that investment by saving his soul. And, and so I want you to know, don't give up just because you hadn't, hadn't been able to lead that one person. You keep on planting that seed. You keep on watering that. You keep on going. God will give you a return on your investment. So the next thing we see is he accepted the sacrifice. He accepted. In verse 18, he says this. He said, Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from your paradise the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Listen, the difference was their hearts. When we do things from a, a, a good heart, God will return his profit of investment on us. And the terminology here in the, uh, the the return is he's talking about that he's going to make 
full and that he is going to supply all of our needs, but he is going to make us full. See, and here's what I want you to see here. He's talking about uh, that we must do it in an acceptable light. We must examine our motivations. One of the, one of the clearest uh, ways that I see to, to talk about mo ex examining our motivation is over in Matthew's, Matthew's, <laughs> Matthew chapter 6. There's only one Matthew, sorry. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, he's talking about, let me flip over there. I don't want to try to quote it to you, and then y'all look at me like i got four heads. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, he says, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have received your reward, and you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. Well, wait a minute. That's kind of against what the world teaches, isn't it? The world wants you to show your good deeds off to everybody. They want you to show just how good of a person you are. But God says, do your deeds not to be seen by man, but to be seen by God, your Father in heaven. And so we gotta we got to examine our motivation when we're doing things. Uh, we we got to examine our motivation. Listen, I've been in places and churches where uh, I've had people tell me just how much they've given to the church. <laughs> and I, I, I like to just look at them and say, you're welcome. You've received your reward. I'll give you an accolade. But see, we do these things so that God our Father can see them. We don't feed the poor. We don't do these things so man can pat us on the back. We do them because God has commanded us to do it. And so we have to do these things from an acceptable motivation. Listen, I'm not saying you got to go hide and give somebody money. <laughs> I'm saying when we do it with the right motivation. Well, we know that God knows our heart. And to serve him with proper motive is our responsibility. And his response is his responsibility. So we're faithful to obey. If we're faithful to obey. He is going to supply all our needs, folks. Our needs. Listen, I want you to understand something. Some of these preachers on, church, on, on TV are not going to tell you this part. But in verse 19, he says, And my God shall supply all your need. According to your riches and glory by your Christ Jesus, by Christ Jesus, now to God our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to explain something to you. God will supply all your need. He does not say anything about your wants. That's right. <laughs> he says he's going to supply your need. Amen. And you can't out give God. So you give and God's going to supply your need. Amen. Now, we also got to remember that everything in the earth and the fullness of earth is his. So if he means for you to have an abundance, then you're going to have an abundance. So he supply all your needs. He shall fill to full. And needs are necessities. Well, preacher, I want to I want to live my best life now. Well, okay. <laughs> my best life is yet to come. I'm putting up my rewards in heaven. Because, see, here's the thing. I want you to understand. The more rewards we get to put up in heaven, it's not so we get to sing our accolades. It's just more that we can lay down at the Father's feet. Yep. I'd rather have more to lay down at His feet than have more to lay down at y'all's feet. Amen. Amen, preacher. We don't have to be afraid to give to the needs of others thinking it'll hurt our families because God's going to take care of us. That old preacher used to tell me, he said, son, give till it hurts. <laughs> I said, it already hurts. <laughs> but God knows our hearts. There's been times where we've given that last little bit. He said, all right, Lord, that power bill is a need. Now, I want to tell you something. I'm about to get real up in here. Since I've been serving God, I've never had my power cut off. <laughs> I've never had my water cut off. I've never went without a meal, in case you missed that. I haven't missed anything since I've been serving God. He's taking care of this boy, even though I might not be as, as, as faithful as I should be and this that, but he's taking care of me nonetheless. He has supplied all my needs. And he is faithful and just to supply all your needs. All he's asking is for you to surrender to him. 
surrender to him. Give God his due, his service, his love, his prayer, the tithes, the time, the talents, and God will respond by meeting all your material, mental, social, and emotional, and praise God your spiritual needs. Does God care about your material? Absolutely he does. Does God care about my social? Absolutely he does. But we invest in the kingdom and he invests in us. We must be faithful in our responsibility and God will be faithful in meeting our needs. This is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, hey, thank you. But I want you to know that your fruit on your account is so much more. They may think, man, we sent Paul this much and we did this, that, and the other. But Paul is saying, stop looking at that. Look at the fruit that's on your account. Well, what fruit's he talking about? Look at the people that Paul was reaching for Christ. Look at the people that will now be in heaven because that church took the time to support him and say, hey, we see something good in you. We're going to take care of God's man. We're going to send money to him. And they said, he said, look at the fruit on your account. Look at the soul saved, the lives changed, and the disciples that were made from just that little bit of money. By the way, they didn't send him a large amount of money. It was, it was, it was a small amount of money in our day and time. But they sent it anyway. And Paul said, look at the fruit that is on your account. I talked with uh, my, my home church this week. And uh, we were talking about revival and the difference. And in, 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 uh, he's in a total different county. And he's up in the mountains. And I, I talked to him and I said, man, I said, I just don't understand. Now, many of y'all have heard this story how I told you about how a small church, maybe 16 to 20 people, paid for most of my college education. Now, you want to talk about God showing up in a mighty way. God used a small little church to pay for most of my education that I had. Amen. I said, I just don't understand what y'all see in me. They said, we don't see you. We see the fruit that's coming out of you. Amen. I got to thinking about that. I got to think of man. How great that somebody looked past me. They didn't care about me. They cared about the fruit that God was going to get out of me and show out of me. And man, I got to think about that. Made me want to go give more. Why? Because I want more on my account. I want God to put more on my account that I can reach more and see more and see folks come to Christ. Listen, as a Christian, if you are not burdened for the lost and you are not burdened for those who are lost and dying and going to hell, my friend, you need to check up on your so-called salvation. Now, that was mean, preacher. No, I want to be honest with you. I want to be truthful with you. I think one of the worst things that we can be as Christians in this day and time is quiet. Yep. I think as Christians, it's time to get up off the couch and shout and say, Jesus is the answer. Christ is the only King of kings and Lord of lords. I don't care who they put in the White House. That doesn't take God off his throne. Listen. We have the answer that those folks are looking for. We have a peace that they are searching for, that they are rioting and tearing down buildings for. They are looking for a justice or whatever they want to find. But Jesus is the only one that can supply these needs. We have the answer that they're seeking for. I don't know why y'all looking at me like that. I still got to preach another service. Woo! I dare one of y'all come to 11 o'clock service. <laughs> I hear it gets better. I think I just get loosened up. <laughs> if God has so saved our soul, we should commit all that we are to him. Listen, without Christ, we are nothing. We are nothing. We don't have a story. We don't have a reason. Without Christ, we are not. Have you put your faith, complete faith in him and what he has done? Christian, it's time to completely sell out. Completely sell out. Give it all over to him and he will supply all your needs.
say, well, preacher, it's easy for you to stand up there and say this, that, and the other. It's easy for... Listen. I've had times where I've been scared. Don't look up here and think there's some kind of giant of faith standing up here. There's been times, Mike, where I've sat in the corner and I've had to cry and say, God, how in the world are you going to work this one out? It's impossible. <laughs> God loves it when I say it's impossible. <laughs> because the Bible says where it's impossible with man, it's possible with God. He likes it when I say I give up. He likes it when I say I surrender. He likes it when I say, God, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to have to let you do your work. <laughs> Always. Folks, it's time to sell out. Completely and utterly. I, I'm, I, I'm telling you this because I believe that time is drawing nigh. I believe that the, the, the time of, of, of God coming back is soon at hand. I don't believe we're going to have too much more time to tarry here. But why are you saying that, preacher? I'm saying that because you need to get on fire. You need to start sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the only hope that these folks are searching for, and they're searching for it in all the wrong places. Well, preacher, what if they reject me? <laughs> Bible says something about that too. He says if they hate you and reject you, remember they hated and rejected me first. We're not called to convert everybody. We're called to tell everybody. And in the midst of that, sometimes you get somebody that converts and comes to Christ. Like my dear friend. <laughs> Shared a lot of time and a lot of prayers with him. But that other pastor was able to punch him on through. Amen. And I thank God that that old boy will be in heaven one day. And it was because... Someone was sold out enough to say, Jesus can change your life, buddy. I love this little sign down here at the, at the, the Mount Hollis. You're never too lost that you can't be saved. I didn't get to hear the, the youth sermon yesterday that John shared, but my, the one thing that stuck out with my children is they came home and they said this. And John, if I say this wrong, I'm sorry. Said he never... You can never come to Christ too early. You can never come to him at the wrong time or bad time. You can't never come to him when you're not things all together. But there is a such thing as being too late. Too late is that last breath. And we've rejected Christ. I want you to know whether mainstream Christianity wants to preach it or not, hell does exist. And hell is very real, and hell is very full of folks that have rejected Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't, I don't hope anybody here rejects the love of Jesus Christ. The simplest thing you can ever remember is for God so loved the world. He so loved you, even though he knew the worst about you. Even though he knew what you did in the privacy of your home when you thought no one was looking, God so loved you. He sent his only begotten son, not because you deserved it, because you deserved hell, you deserved judgment, you deserved justice. But he sent his only son to die on the cross. Why? Because that's the only way that you can ever come into a relationship with the holy God is for a holy God to lay down a life for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever Believe it. Praise God, I'm whomsoever. Amen. Shall have everlasting life. Hey, I want you to know something. You're whomsoever. You're the whomsoever he's talking about. John, Paul, Jesus, they all said repent and believe. Repent and believe what? That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That he came to this earth, lived a perfect life, laid down his life. Listen, nobody took his life away from him. He laid down his life. I'll deal with that heresy on Wednesday night. Nobody killed Jesus. Jesus laid down his life. 
for us so that we might be saved. Amen and amen. Father God, I thank you so much, Lord. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for who you are. God, I pray over each person gathered here, Lord. I pray if one of them doesn't know you, maybe they're, as I said last week, faking it till they make it. God, I pray that you convict their hearts right now. I pray that you just lock their car up. Don't let them leave this parking lot until they have made the decision. Listen, to leave here and reject Christ is one of the most dangerous things anyone could ever do, Lord. God, don't let them do it. Lord, I pray their battery die on their car right now, that you keep them here and not allow them to step off into a devil's hell. Father, I pray for the, the ones that are gathered here that said, Preacher, I'm saved. I'm saved to the end. God, I pray that you set us on fire and get us fired up again for the gospel. Get us fired up for, for reaching a lost and dying world. Father, there are people that are rampant in the streets and destroying things, and they are seeking a justice that can only be found in you. Father, help us to speak up And know that you're going to take care of us no matter what the outcome. Father, I thank you for my dear brother. I pray that you just bless him and increase in him. God, I pray for each one. Father God, I thank you and I love you and I ask these things in your precious name. Amen. Listen, I want you to understand something. No matter where you may be, no matter what you may have done, there is nothing that you can do to make God love you any less or make him love you any more. His love is sufficient for every, every single person. I just want you to understand that. I pray that God bless you, keep you, and that you have a wonderful week. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell somebody about Jesus this week. Because if you know him, you can tell them what you know about him. And so I ask that you tell someone about Jesus this week. And as Mike comes around, I want y'all to remember Mike in prayer. Remember his family in prayer. Remember Miss Betty Jo. Uh, she lost her brother-in-law. Uh, Miss May lost her father. I want you to remember these folks. Keep them in your prayers. Uh, they're hurting. And so I want you to just remember them and, and keep them in prayer. And so before you leave, tell somebody you love them and say hello. And if you need to talk to me, blow the horn at me or wait, wait till I'm done or what, whatever you want to do. Just let me know you need to talk to me. I'll be more than happy to talk to you. Nobody in this world is worth going to hell for. And so I ask that you have a wonderful week and God bless you.